So let us take a discussion further on development economics. And I think this is your second class on introductory development economics. Um, so we'll start with defining what is development. So there are two views we are talking about. One is a traditional view. So we'll write about the traditional economic measures and traditional view of structural change. And then we will also look at the new view on economic development. So how uh, the time has changed uh, the view, time has changed the view uh, people look at economic development. So when do they consider something as developed? Right. So in terms of traditional economic measures, uh, we will say in case if there is uh, uh, economy is able to generate output, right? Uh, so it is measured via GNP at uh, 5% to 7% or more, right? That is one traditional economic measure. The other could be there is an increase in per capita income. In case if that is there, then we, we, we consider that yes, economy is developing. Uh, and particularly that the output growth has to be more than the population growth. Because in case if the output is not growing faster than the population, then whatever increases in output is going to happen, that will be taken away by the population growth. So output growth faster than the population growth. output growth faster than population. Right. Then there is a traditional view on the structural change. So when you write about the traditional view of the structural change, so there is, um, so we assume that, I mean, economy, most of the economies were agricultural uh, in the beginning. Then with development, they will become industrialized. And then with more development, there will be a shift towards the service economy. So this is the pattern most of the capitalist countries also have taken up. Right. So from agriculture. to industry, to services, right? So the basic idea you can say that we were talking about economic growth in the traditional uh, traditional measure. We are not talking about poverty. We are not talking about uh, income inequality. We're not talking about human well-being. What we are talking about that if we are able to generate economic growth, if there is an increase in income, we are developed. That is a traditional view on development. But the modern view is little different. Let's have a look at that. Post 1960s realization was also there. So when you talk about new view on development. So after 1960s, people have started realizing that in many developing countries, there was the growth in per capita income. But these countries, they were uh, there was persistent inequality, there was persistent unemployment and persistent poverty, right? So what kind of growth is that in which you have a lot of, uh, lot of uh, poverty in which you have a lot of uh, unemployment? What kind of growth is that? Uh, so yet, but persistent. Poverty. income inequality and unemployment. Right. In 1980s, what also was realized that in many nations, economic growth had slowed down. So, and many of the governments, they were facing debt crisis. Many governments they were facing debt crisis. There was reduced social spending. So social spending on education, health, whatever these governments were doing, 
they have reduced them why because they were facing debt crisis and economic growth have also slowed down so reduced social spending right and uh, they were not able to maintain the momentum for development which they had earlier uh, and in 1990s there was a new insight which came you look at developed nations they were growing at around 2% annually they had a huge base at which the growth was there so even 2% was enough for them to grow but their growth have i mean it had not benefited the growth in the developing countries these that growth has not trickled down to the poorer countries right so growth did not trickle down to poorer countries right uh, to poorer countries so what is an insight which was come do you think that only growth is sufficient to maintain development in case if that was there then why were all these countries were not developed uh, uh, so growth alone was not sufficient to maintain development growth alone was not sufficient to maintain development <clears throat> to maintain development so before 1960s the major emphasis on or major emphasis was on growth only so if you have growth it means development is there don't you worry but after 1990s there was a certain realization which has started coming that we are looking we are uh, seeing that growth is there but can we can we call this growth as development no that was not there right so it means that development is a multi dimensional process it is not just increase in income so if you write an answer related to this you will have to write these points so you will be writing that development so you call development as a multi dimensional process because it is not just looking at growth yes acceleration of growth is a part of it undoubtedly but you also have to work on reduction of inequality you also have to work on removal of poverty right so in this small class what we have done is that we have looked at two views on development the view of development which was still 1960s and how that view has changed after 1960s right and we have just touched upon this thing that development is a multi dimensional process it also involves reduction in inequality and removal of poverty apart from acceleration of growth in the chapter uh, to darrow and smith has also discussed sains capability approach so i will do in the next class very briefly what they have done as sains capability approach but mind you we will have a different reading on uh, uh, poverty as a capability deprivation by amrita kumar singh so we will have to go in very detail in that reading on on this capability approach or anything but for tomorrow's class uh, i will be picking up uh, very briefly whatever to darren smith has discussed right so i hope it was useful to you you have to make notes side by side daily चलिए सो विल स्टॉप हेयर विल टेक द डिस्कशन फॉर द नेक्स्ट क्लास थैंक यू बेटा